Let's get some uh, analysis. Eric Lissand, a former U.S. federal prosecutor, a lawyer in the States and in France, and our own legal expert. He joins us now live. Eric, may I start by asking you, what was your impression of, of what you heard today? I think today was really a continuation, the morning in particular. The afternoon is different, but the morning two witnesses that you introduced first were really a continuation of the narrative that was started last week and that will probably continue throughout the week, which was that we had a highly irregular uh, and non-professional channel of diplomacy open directly from the president going through Rudolph Giuliani and these uh, three amigos, which, to, to paraphrase, shocked and horrified the uh, professional diplomats that were involved because they felt that it did endanger national security. And the only reason to do that was to further the personal political ambitions of the president. So they struggled with how to deal with that. And they, and they did so uh, despite the fact that they're going to face great personal peril in doing so, and they had some difficulties in raising the alarm. So I think the morning very much supported the existing narrative that, uh, that the Democrats have, uh, have postulated is actually the case here. The afternoon two witnesses are a little bit different. Those are witnesses that the Republicans wanted to uh, bring in. One is Ambassador Volker, who you just played. He has to justify his own participation uh, without reporting concerns during the scheme. So he is putting forth uh, a perception that he didn't fully understand at, at the time the ramifications were going on. And the other witness, Tim Morrison, who replaced Fiona Hill, who we have not heard from yet, as the chief deputy to National Security Council, is trying to portray this more along the lines that I, th I think are friendlier to Republicans, which is that uh, I didn't want word of this to be publicized. I didn't necessarily mean that I thought that it was anything horribly wrong, but I didn't want the aid to Ukraine to be held up. So that's, that's where this is right now. Do you think that you've heard enough to say there is enough proof to actually go ahead and impeach President Trump? Me personally, yes, but I've been following it very closely. Uh, and I'm factoring in the reporting of the closed door testimony, some of which has already been publicly released, uh, some of which hasn't been officially released, but, but some of it is, has nonetheless been leaked to the press and other background elements. Uh, however, that's not to say that we shouldn't listen very carefully to all the other witnesses. That could change. But the way things are going right now, I would say it's uh, close to a virtual certainty that the end of this process, the overwhelming majority, if not, say, 90 percent of the Democratic congressmen plus uh, one former Republican, will vote to uh, essentially refer this matter to the Senate for a full formal trial on whether the president should be removed from office or not. That's my sense of it right now. There's still a lot of decisions to be made, and, and, and including how much conduct of the president to be included, whether they should go outside just what happened in the Ukrainian uh, scheme to include some other elements of concern or not. That's my take on it. Now, the Republicans uh, have, have a partisan take, which is very different, that this is all within the, the, the permissible scope of conduct of the, of the president, because he has to be viewed as somebody who has almost unfettered discretion over the conduct of foreign policy. And if you look at it from a particular angle and just look at the end results, it's no harm, no foul. Let's move on here. That's the Republican line. But I think that uh, at the end of the day, even as polling reflects the, the public opinion in the United States, as more of the public becomes attuned to this, that seems to be more and more of a minority viewpoint. Eric, what would the actual procedure be then if they decide to go ahead and impeach Trump? Well, at the end of all of this testimony, in, in this is called the House Intelligence Committee, it will get referred to the Judiciary Committee. Then there'll be further proceedings to decide what the quote-unquote articles of impeachment 
should look like. That is to say, what would be the exact language, the exact formal charges of the impeachable conduct? What should they put in here? You've heard in, in following these proceedings much discussion about things like bribery, extortion, obstruction of justice, obstruction of uh, Congress, failure to faithfully execute the laws, abuse of office, things like this. But the Congress will have the responsibility of distilling all this into a formal bill of impeachment, much, uh, much similar to what was done in the case of President Clinton and even in the case of President Nixon. Nixon resigned uh, before that was completely completed. But once that's done, maybe in a, in a few weeks, depending on the Democrats' schedule, and we now have holidays coming up in the United States, then there will be a vote taken as to whether to vote that into a formal trial, so to speak, in the Senate. And after that, it will get formally, assuming that happens, that will get formally referred to the Senate, and there will be a trial in the Senate where the 100 senators will have to vote by a two-thirds majority if they want to remove the president from office. That trial will be presided over by the Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, and the rules and procedures for that will be a joint um, procedural exercise, but largely determined by the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell. Edging from legal matters to more political matters, Eric, um, where do you think this leaves both the Republicans and the Democrats vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the presidential campaign and going forward? Obviously, this is a big issue in the campaign, but some of the candidates are struggling to differentiate that issue. They don't want to be tied, these, some of the candidates don't want to be tied into exclusively campaigning on the issue of impeachment, but it's very difficult to do that, particularly because some of the leading candidates are, uh, are, are senators themselves who will be sitting and presiding as effectively judges in this impeachment trial. So there will be no complete separation of the two factors. But we are seeing a, a, a steady uh, erosion of support is, because many damaging facts are coming out. And even if the Republican argument is that it's not impeachable, it does not look good for the president. The fear politically at the outset of the proceedings, at least for the Democrats, had been that somehow this would be viewed as being too uh, partisan and not a fair use of congressional time. But based on the evidence that's come out so far, uh, it, does, it does not seem to be playing that way. It seems to be playing more in the way of this needs to be investigated, this needs to be disclosed publicly, th th this needs to be explored further. So it's, it's going to complicate the president's efforts. And we already saw that in, in some of the early results for what are called the off-year elections that we had about a week ago in some of the southern states. Democratic governors did win in, in Republican territory. So there's a lot for Republicans to be concerned about. All that having been said, it's, it's going to be very close and nobody knows how it'll play out right now. Errol Sam, thank you. As ever, very much indeed. And of course, we're watching all developments from Washington. Our thanks again to Errol Lissan, our legal expert.